Welcome to Name Three Songs. I'm Sarah Fagan. I'm Jenna Million, and this is a podcast where we discuss feminist issues in music and pop culture, all while empowering fangirls. Because let's be honest, fangirls knew about that band way before you did. And last week we had a super special guest on, Larisha Paul, our entertainment journalist who also happens to be working at Rolling Stone right now. And we got to dive into album of the year, Grammy mess, as well as talking about queer baiting in general, which surprise is another theme in today's episode. (laughs) But if you guys want to hear like our full thoughts and feelings about the Grammys in general, we did do an episode for Patreon where we just talk about red carpets and performances and general feelings and like, does anyone care about the Grammys anymore? A consistent question we always revisit, which will probably never be answered. All of that is available over on patreon.com slash name three songs. But today... Sarah, what was your fangirl internet nonsense moment of the week? I mean, other than Demois suing their subreddit over using <laughs> the Demois name as the subreddit name and them having to change their subreddit to FOMO, which I think is way more entertaining. More on brand, you could say. Definitely more on brand. Honestly, the Reddit probably had more factual information than Demois has factual <laughs> information. <laughs> Let's be real. Obviously, the Brits and Harry Styles being a shining star. It was a beautiful time for me personally. (laughs) Watching him watching him thrive after how uncomfy he seemed at the whole Grammys. But also because the Brits are the Brits, everybody is absolutely pissed off their faces on (laughs) this is what you know what this is what's so funny is that like the brits literally happened like a few days after the grammys yeah it looked way more fun like the grammys from everything we saw it just looked fun the grammys looked nobody looked like they were having fun except for adele and lizzo yeah, I mean, like, the Grammys are, like, definitely more of, like, a quote-unquote, like, high-caliber award show situation. Like, the Brits, there's, like, two international categories. Everybody else is just, like, it's all British acts. So it's, like, way more home turf, like, way more, like, friendship I mean, like, if you watch a British reality competition show compared to an American reality competition show, like, everybody's helping each other. Like... <laughs> it's fair. Like, True. It's, it's such a different vibe. It's so funny. Um, But I made a video about it on our tiktok just being like oh it was like so nice watching harry be like celebrated in this way and like feel so comfortable and like feel like he deserved those awards and i was like and it's really amazing because the brits compared to the grammys have always celebrated boy bands and like they celebrated one direction one direction performed at the brits like they won awards at the brits like it's very exciting that like they as a as like a voting committee or whatever like i don't know how the brits voting works continue to support harry because he won four awards and out of the four only one of them was a fan voted category so like these are his peers voting for him and i think that's a really big deal and like really exciting and like it must feel really satisfying to him to know like throughout his whole career who's been taken seriously and like awarded for his talents and I made a cute video about it and all these British fans were in the comments being like, of course he's happier. He's at home. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? Like girls were commenting on the video and I was like, I literally, like I was like responding to some of them being like, I literally would hate to see how mean you are to people who are bullying him. <laughs> Because I was just like, I'm so happy for him. He's thriving. Look how happy and drunk he is. And people were also mad that I said he was drunk. And I'm like, that's a disheveled, drunken British man. <laughs> like, and th- the best part of the whole Brits thing was that he went to this club afterwards called The Box, which is like a super exclusive nightclub. There's one in London and there's one in New York. And, and they have sex shows at these clubs. And he left the club at like 7 a.m. the next morning. Oh my god. (laughs) The paparazzi photos are iconic. I also had some favorite moments from the Brits, but for a different artist, which was Charlie XCX. Because first off, on the red carpet, someone asked her about the Brits' failure to nominate any woman for best artist this year. 
And Charlie says, I was on an album cycle. I had a number one. So yeah, there's many of us. We're doing everything right. I don't think it's our fault. I think it might be theirs. <laughs> Rina Sawayama also had like a really incredible album this year. So yeah, points made. But Charlie was there serving looks. And the best part of it was the, a- again, the after party photos that we got <laughs> of like her and George absolutely being the it couple of the year. She has on like a extreme crop top that's like basically also see-through that says real winner and like a black mini skirt and like it's just funny because it's like giving it's like giving like in several years from now we're gonna be like oh my god remember when charlie wore that black mini skirt with the white crop top that said real (laughs) winner and then like doing this for halloween costumes but she has a photo that she posted in like a carousel with george and he's literally just like grabbing her boobs i've never been more jealous (laughs) trying to bite her face (laughs) jealous of a man in my life <laughs> i'm like well they are the it couple they're the it couple of the like they, i'm never recovering they are this. the paul mezcal and phoebe bridgers for the tumblr girlies of the early <laughs> 2010s she also has a photo with rena sawayama and they're like clearly like underneath a table together like taking a photo and there's also a photo of like george smoking and maddie looking pissed in general partying and then they did a video of like them in like a car going somewhere and them doing charlie's like remix to the caroline polachek song and it's icon it's it's charlie level iconic i love her i love them so that was my highlight of the week honestly the brits are a gift like i the brit awards never ceases to be fantastic it's always a wonderful time i mean in other iconic pop culture happenings obviously the super bowl happened which is just as big of a deal as the brits obviously and <laughs> And uh, the Rihanna show the, featuring the, football. Yeah, the Rihanna concert featuring football occurred. And I have never seen more women team up to yell at men in the room about don't judge Rihanna for her postpartum body only to be told Rihanna is in fact pregnant <laughs> than happened that night. Because the like literally I, I my my mom and like our family group chat texted and was like is rihanna pregnant and i was like she just had a baby do not hate her for having a little pudge (laughs) i went to rihanna's defense so fast and then i saw a bunch of tiktoks of like other women saying that they had the same conversation with somebody else that they were in a room with and then obviously her reps confirmed that she was in fact pregnant so we all had to be like "Mm, sorry (laughs) interesting I feel like the fact that she wore such a tight outfit, it was like she was trying to make a statement, but she could have been making a statement either way. Who yeah, knows? I feel like a statement could have been made in either direction. So after Super Bowl, after she announced the second pregnancy, by the way, which means she already had the first baby and everyone's like, wait, have we even seen this baby ever? She did a, like an entire photo shoot with British Vogue and ASAP Rocky and their existing baby. And it was like very, which honestly like makes sense because like the pregnancy photos that they did before to announce this was like, she was like literally eight months pregnant and like they just went on a paparazzi walk. <laughs> like I know. Do you remember? I, lo- I love that so much. There was this tweet where some like a man tweeted and was like, "The emasculation of men continues. You can already tell who the man is in this relationship. That dude about to be a proud mother of two and somebody quote tweeted it and goes, "Fellas, is it gay to have sex with Rihanna?" <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, so I mean everybody was having a field day over Rihanna as they should, but I feel like also the performance was also just like a big ad for Fenty. So I feel like if anything, Rihanna was like, Yeah, I gave you this performance because you're never gonna hear me sing ever again after this. True. She's like, so... I, I did this to get my bag because I'm having baby number two, so we gotta pay the bills again. <laughs> Yeah, so the, those are all the, the positive happenings in pop culture and fangirlness. We do, before we get into like the main meat of the discussion today, I want to acknowledge, of course, that Megan Fox and MGK maybe broke up. And following in the footsteps of Harry Styles and Olivia Wilde's weird uncoupling announcement that happened like Friday after 
the workday was over. Megan Fox also posted on her Instagram a carousel of photos with a mystery man and her burning some letters, as well as captioning the photo carousel with Beyonce lyrics, a potential breakup note about her and MGK, then unfollowed MGK on Instagram. The only people she's following on Instagram are Timothy Chalamet, Harry Styles, and Eminem, which says a lot. And the- well, also, if you guys don't know, Michigan and Kelly has like a lot of beef with Eminem. Yeah, a lot. And like they had diss tracks going back and forth and like Machine Gun Kelly and Prusher said stuff about Eminem's daughter. So yep. ugh. also I'm just Googling like Megan Fox's Instagram right now. She deleted her Instagram. Yeah, she deleted her whole Instagram. So it's serious. And everybody was losing their mind because it looked like at the Grammys that they were fighting. And also at the Grammys she had a cast on her wrist. And so there's I been a lot of talk about MGK possibly being abusive which is all allegations of course um not even allegations rumors so there's this article in people says megan fox is not letting any injuries cramp her grammy style after revealing that she braved a broken wrist and concussion right before grammy's weekend fox ditched the cast for the 65th annual award show but there was a video from inside where she had like the cast or whatever it was on her wrist again wow but on Valentine's Day, Page Six posted an article titled MGK and Megan Fox leave couples counselors building separately amid split rumors. And so there are these photos of them leaving an office building in Agora Hills, California, where apparently there are various couple and marriage counseling specialists and they left in separate cars. I don't know what's going on. But, I mean, he's not been looking very well. I mean, I I feel like it was a big enough red flag that, like, the engagement ring that he got her would cause her pain if she took it off. This is, like, like, vaguely familiar, but... So, the uh... engagement ring had thorns on it, and so if she would were to remove it it wouldn't make her bleed yikes i mean i feel like it was already like another red flag as well that they like dressed up like pam and tommy for halloween and they also i think it was the mtv video awards was the one where they like did they dressed in outfits that play, paid homage to rose mcgallan and marilyn manson which is like also an abused woman relationship so they have questionable taste yeah i Um, just like i have questions more than anything i have questions more than thoughts i just like want to know what's going on (laughs) there are so many questions and no answers which is why this belongs in the beginning of the podcast just for us to ruminate on and remember that this has occurred so when more information comes out we can like talk about potentially what this means for the world but this seems to be the week of like weird celebrity photos coming out whether they're paparazzi or Self taken, <laughs> like Emily Radinjakowski and Eric Andre's heart. I did not need to see that. I did not <laughs> need to Instagram. see that. I feel like I'm scarred. Yeah, that was an interesting photo, which was them both nude, and it was mostly of Eric Andre, and you could see Emily in the mirror in the background. <laughs> He's like splayed out on a couch. Choices were made, <laughs> but today we're here to talk about Louis Tomlinson. <laughs> And this is where we get into the meat of the episode. And my expertise come into play, which is nice that like my ridiculous almost decade long career in media, actually the part of my job that I do every day (laughs) is going to get to come into play for the podcast, which is very exciting. So for those of you who don't pay attention to One Direction or Louis Tomlinson, some new paparazzi photos appeared on the timeline on Twitter on Thursday so that would be the 16th of February I wake up in the morning to Louis Tomlinson trending on Twitter and I go and I look and there's paparazzi photos of him holding hands with a blonde girl and the responses are very varied as you can expect from Twitter and if you've listened to our podcast going back you know about the vast amount of Louis Tomlinson fans that also believe that he and Harry Styles are still in a secret relationship and have been for years and so the discourse on twitter was interesting but because it is my job to look at celebrity photos and deal with paparazzi images and all that stuff anytime there's a new photo on twitter that i see of a celebrity that i like 
I try and figure out where the photo originated from because I like to get more information. I like to know what's going on. And usually these fan accounts do credit the places that they got the photos from. There was no credit on these photos, which was red flag number one for me. Red flag number two is I assume this is backgrid. So for those of you who need some more information on paparazzi sites, the biggest paparazzi site is backgrid. And there's lots of rumors that go around on TikTok about how backgrid is like 97% celebrities and or their teams giving a tip to a paparazzi the paparazzi showing up taking the photos and like it being a very like symbiotic relationship between the celebrity and the paparazzi that's definitely not the correct stats i want to say it's like 65 percent of backgrid photos are pre-planned and the rest are not backgrid does buy photos from any photographer that will take photos of celebrities and maybe post them online and be like we'll give you money, like take them down. We'll sell these to publications for you. But like paparazzi exist in the wild it, it, where celebrities are, you know, like it's, it's completely possible to just like see a celebrity out on a date somewhere and for photos to be taken. It is also possible for celebrities to know where paparazzi are and go there on purpose to be photographed there rather than calling the paparazzi. But I'm not saying that that's what's happening because the other discourse around Louis is that so he recently finally finished his contract that he had with like people that he still had to be connected with that were like still connected to simon cowell he finally like finished with that management team finished with that label he's now signed to a new label he's working with a new management team and he has control again and he's like been very vocal about like his hatred of hollywood and his hatred of like being forced to go to parties and like all of this stuff so louis allowing his team to like plan a pap walk for him and a girl he's known for maybe two weeks does it doesn't feel right Like, that doesn't make any sense based off of what I know about this man. So with that background, I sign on to my backward account and the photos are not there. (laughs) They're not there, (laughs) which was like insane. I then go on the back end of our site that we have all of like the photos on because I'm like, maybe they're not backward. So I go and I look also not on the back end. I then go and check the pitch emails that we get like on our email to like, like, Every, everyone in the photo department, we all get pitch emails from sites where the photos aren't available yet because they are like exclusive images and they're trying to sell them for like a shit ton of money and that they're only going to be and whoever like essentially bids the highest amount of money then gets those photos exclusively for X amount of hours. It's usually 24. And so then those photos are not available to anybody else until those all 24 hours are All this is just like up. wild. I know. Like, I understand. I understand how embargoes work because we use them in, like, PR as well. But it's, like, the fact that these photos go for, like, thousands of dollars and, like, to think that a tabloid is paying thousands of dollars because they would get thousands of dollars in views in return is wild to think about. Yeah. But, like, this is the other thing. It's, like, relatively speaking, Louis is a B-list celebrity. Like, he's not worth exclusive rates for photos. Because you're not going to see the return. If you go look on the Daily Mail's site under like the Louis Tomlinson tag, there are more posts about his influencer sister Lottie than there are about him. Because he's not getting the clicks. Lottie's getting the clicks because she's an influencer. And so anything about Louis is usually very like of recent is like actual news of like when he broke his arm or like, oh, the first time he's been like... He was like seen out when like on the anniversary of his mom's death and like stuff like that. But they're not th- th- like those those articles are definitely not getting like the return that you would need to to spend like over two thousand dollars on photos. But so these photos are nowhere. I cannot find any proof that these photos exist other than on Twitter. Like they weren't posted on the Daily Mail. They weren't posted on the Sun. And this is the thing. It's like photos for louis who is like a british man it's not going to be page six who has these it's always going to be the daily mail or the sun and then after that it might be the mirror or like the telegraph and so two hours after i see these photos on twitter finally the mirror posts an article with these images and then two hours after that okay magazine posts the same photos and that's all i still ha- did not have access to the images on like my company back end did not have access to these images still as far as i knew they didn't exist <laughs> like they just existed on these sites but like i couldn't i couldn't do anything with them i signed on for work today and the images were finally there and they were under embargo until 
so today being Friday the 17th, they were under embargo until the afternoon of the 17th. Like they could not be posted again. And the photos were premium exclusive, which means that they were over $2,000 for the set of images. And so my mind was like completely blown because I, in my whole career, have never seen a Twitter account get first dibs on paparazzi photos. And so my mind automatically goes to, this is really interesting from the perspective of what is media becoming in the world of social media? What is media becoming since we have TikTok and like Twitter and these accounts that paparazzi and like the people taking these images, the people doing these things, like know that the people who want to see these images exist, live on Twitter or they live on TikTok and all that stuff. So my mindset is I want to find out who had these photos first, where they got them from, and like if they were like pitch these photos in the same way that tabloids would normally be pitched them. Would this fan account in theory then have paid the photographer directly? So in theory, the fan account would have, yeah, would have paid the paparazzi. The paparazzi, like basically my mindset was, was like, did the paparazzi go to the fan account or did the fan account pay a yeah. paparazzi to go find Louie and take photos of him like that was what my mindset was and so I was like I'm gonna go post a TikTok about this and try and see if I can get any information I like thought it might wind up on Larry TikTok that's that's where it went nobody helpful arrived (laughs) (laughs) nobody helpful arrived because I'm here thinking so the mystery is still unsolved the mystery is still completely unsolved because everything is like a fucking unhinged conspiracy I did find out that it was HLD HQ which is Harry Louis Daily HQ on Twitter was who posted it and some of the people in my in the comments on the tick on my TikTok are saying that the account is run by somebody who has a vast amount of money and that they have paid people before to get unseen images and that it's most known that they paid Helen, who is the French female photographer who toured with Harry Styles for unseens of Harry on tour. And so apparently this, like, is, this, is, this is widely known. And so my, my, so like my mindset now is that like either they paid a paparazzi because they knew Louis lives in a certain area and like had started dating a girl or like going on dates or whatever and wanted to see what they could get but that account almost all of the time when they there are paparazzi photos especially when they're with a girl the girl is always cropped out so it was also really suspect that they didn't crop the girl out because i'm like you're literally a larry stylinson update account (laughs) like what is going on here and they also didn't credit them and Mm. they always credit them and you literally have to credit them And so I'm just like confused because I was going at this from like the media mindset of like, look how media is shifting. This could be so interesting. And instead, I got crazy conspiracy theories. And the big reason why the the conspiracy theorists feel that their conspiracies hold some weight is that a couple days ago, maybe a week ago, Louis announced that he had a documentary coming out about his like journey and his career and a lot of Larry's think that in this, he's going to talk about being forced into a stunt relationship with Eleanor and what that was like for him and all this stuff. And so they're convinced that these photos of him with this random blonde girl who also happens to be 22. I, I would never even speak to a man under the age of 25, like as a friend, what is a 31 year old doing with a 22 year old? Like Louis and I are the same age. The age gap situation is getting weirder when the older person is starting to be my age because I'm like, that is a child. <laughs> You're like, I would never date a 22 year old. Like, I feel uncomfortable um, when like a 26 year old talks to me. <laughs> like, I also hate to, I hate to be this person, but they are totally siblings or dating. I feel that she is. They are dressed exactly the same, basically. But I'm like, he looks. They look she looks like his sister. Yeah, he, she does. You're right. Weird. So the documentary is coming out. The fans think this, like, or a good portion of the fans think that it, there's going to be a lot of stunt information. And so they're saying that Louis or his management planned this and gave it to fan Twitter because apparently Louis's team is in cahoots with fan Twitter and they give them things a lot, which like, let's let's be real we all know that like record labels and brands and all that stuff like they pay influencers to talk about their artists they pay influencers to talk about their brands i wouldn't be shocked if 
record labels also work with fan accounts to help promote certain things. That does not mean that they're in cahoots <laughs> with fan accounts. Yeah. That means that they know that the best way to get information to fans is to give information to fan accounts first, which yeah. is completely yeah. normal and has happened throughout time. I used to run fan accounts on MySpace and bands managements would tell me things before they told other people things like it's normal to like give the fans who have access to more fans information but these people are saying that these photos are like a new stunt relationship that louis is using to promote the documentary so that his fans are talking about this stunt relationship so that they know that he knows that like we know about stunts like he like they think that this is him like <laughs> they think that this is him acknowledging that stunts exist and this is him promoting the documentary because he knows that this is going to get the fans talking about stunts and that's what their mindset's going to be going into the doc. Uh okay. <laughs> I mean that's all speculation. It's all, like, it's, all we don't, it's all speculation. We don't even know what the documentary is about. I mean it's about his career. So I mean sure maybe who knows but like no. But, like, yeah, th- this yeah, is where we yeah. get into, like, murky water because it's important to understand how media works and nobody really does. And this is the issue. is like, pre-TikTok, there was so much less access to, like, misinformation about paparazzis and tabloids and all of this stuff. And now there's all these pop culture fans who think that they know how paparazzi and tabloids work. And so misinformation is getting spread and then it's emboldening fans who live in conspiracy theory land and so it, it, it's this weird space and i mean we've talked about this ad nauseum like we have two episodes about slash fic and like one of them is specifically about larry stylinson and how it's completely fine to ship people together and like want something to have happened until you get to the point where you're trying to force somebody to like be something that they might not be so just to walk things back a little bit because i'm still thinking about the paparazzi of it all two thoughts one is that i looked up the hldhq account which is also run by update hld on their twitter account they do have a subscribe to update hld because the thing is like i look on their profile and the ones that you sent me originally like aren't on their profile so i wonder if they're on their like subscribers thing because this account has six hundred thousand followers almost seven hundred thousand followers so if you think even like ten percent of those subscribe and it's three dollars a month and they have like maybe like i don't know that's not the high estimate but like seventy thousand subscribers are paying three dollars a month then they absolutely have money to pay photographers yeah they do in theory in theory but like that's the thing that's so interesting it's like in a way it would be really incredible if media was moving in this way where like fans could pay to get the images that they want access to where it's like we know louis lives in this neighborhood or frequents this area like it's really fucked up but like paparazzi are doing yeah paparazzi are doing their job anyway you know like they're doing these things anyway it's not at his house it's not those things i just think that it would be a really interesting and me like not great but like a really interesting step in the way media is digested and the way fans have access to things if these fan accounts took it upon themselves to become the tabloids themselves so this exists in k-pop <laughs> but they're called sasangs and they're essentially stalkers again not what you're trying to get yeah. at, but similar is that they literally like find out artist schedules like their flights when they're going to the airport when they're going to xyz park to like film something they literally go to the extent of like bringing telephoto lenses with them sneaking telephoto lenses into concerts making their way to the floor to take like high quality photos of artists at concerts but also following them in in real life places like going to the airport with telephoto lenses pretending like not even pretending to be a paparazzi like literally just like following them like with their phones in their faces recording like sasang behavior is like really 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 looked down upon within like k-pop community and there's specific these accounts are called fan sites they're called quote-unquote fan sites where they put these photos up and sometimes you'll see like really good photos or like photos of like them and like a place where it seems like we shouldn't have photos of them and it usually because it comes from a fan site and then people will be like don't support this account like they're a fan site like they're stalking them like they're doing this this and this that's like 
we're drawing the line and like we don't support this type of behavior so that's my only concern of like what you're saying of like the dark side yeah. of it is that fans just are emboldened to then become stalkers well, well that's, that's the thing is it's like it could go one of two ways where like it could be fans start to control the narrative because paparazzi are trying to appease to them rather than to tabloids and so then the images might become more like fan centered so more wholesome and less trying to get like naked photos of people because that's the other thing was there was a lot of comments of people being like quoting i think it was niall who said like if you don't want to get popped you don't get like you don't get popped which is not true and also people being like well can't celebrities like stop photos from coming out if they don't want them to come out and the two niall you're just not famous <laughs> enough to know and the, and the, the two the two main examples <laughs> that I keep coming back to is like a couple years ago, there were photos of Justin Bieber that came out when he was on vacation. He was in a private villa and a paparazzi figured out where he was staying, got a telephoto lens and took photos of him naked because Justin Bieber was walking around his house naked. And those photos went out there and Justin Bieber had to be like, what the fuck is this? But like he literally all he could do was be like, what the fuck is this? And then also in 2012, a British paparazzi who worked for a French magazine was sent to Prince William and Kate Middleton's holiday villa to go and try and get some photos. And Kate Middleton was sunbathing topless and the paparazzi took some topless photos of her and Closer magazine published them. And they had to take the paparazzi and the magazine to court and they did win so the images could not be republished anywhere but they were already widely available like so many people saw the duchess is boobs and so it's like if the royal family doesn't have the power to like stop those photos from coming out nobody does and so when people yeah. are in these comments being like oh like they could stop this from happening it's like no that's not the case and this is why i just find it really intriguing that fan accounts might have enough money to pay paparazzi because that could potentially change paparazzi culture for the better going forward if fan accounts start doing this because then the paparazzi know that they're always going to make money from these fan accounts and the images might become more fan interest than tabloid general mm, public interest. Yeah. But like you said, that also yeah. could embolden them to then be like, well, I want more access because it's like the second you get access, you want more access. And the second you have any sense of like importance, you want to feel more important and more powerful. And so there is like that potential dark route that they could go down of I want more power. I want access. And like if we get compromising photos of xyz then x then like we could hold like it could essentially could potentially lead to bla a blackmail situation like it, oh it could God. be real like it could be really dark and fucked up and so these these are the things where it's like i see this and this is where my mind goes because this is part of my day-to-day -day job and yeah. it, instead i've like accidentally made a bunch of fans be like see this girl who <laughs> gave us all of her credentials just told us that this is suspect <laughs> i'm like yeah because it is suspect it's okay <laughs> let's have the, let's have them believing in larry rather than figuring out what you just figured out because that's too much power too so much. we're just gonna keep that on the podcast for you sweet little listeners and we're not gonna tell anyone else um. <laughs> damn i don't no one's thinking on this level like this is literally wild but that's where my mind is at with all of this and i just feel like it's going to be something interesting to look at again with like the ever-changing pop culture situation that's been happening and like how quickly things have been changing because of tiktok and like where it could lead to and something i think to like keep keep an eye out for absolutely and so in speaking of photos sparking wildfire and discourse on the internet we also on valentine's day had kylie jenner and her bestie stassi aka stassi baby <laughs> posting a photo carousel on instagram that led up to the two kissing and the internet lost their collective shit might we just add that like this is a not not the first time that they have been pictured or videoed together being like a little bit closer <laughs> than maybe your normal friendship i just remember there was a video like a few months ago like i feel like it was like holiday yes. time they were like at some party and like fancy like cocktail dresses dancing very closely potentially maybe kissing that like raised a lot of questions the first time or not even the first time around but like 
a few months ago. Yeah. So th- this has been a common theme in their friendship and in Kylie's friendships in general. She had a wedding with her former BFF, Jordan Woods. So like Kylie's been cosplaying queer for a little while. <laughs> but not queer baiting no (laughs) according to people on tiktok who got really mad at me who when i said that kylie's giving by and like that could potentially just be what's going on here people were like have you never seen two close girlfriends i feel bad for you like you clearly don't have any close female friends and i'm like oh my god (laughs) i'm like girlies the patriarchy called (laughs) they want they want their soldiers back (laughs) Uh, okay i think you know because we a long time have talked about queer baiting whatever air quotes queer baiting in relationship to men but i feel like a conversation that we haven't necessarily had on the podcast is like when it comes to women or female presenting people specifically yeah. this conversation often comes up of like oh they're just being girly yeah. like no it's normal to like get drunk and kiss your best friends and it's like is that normal or like is that you exploring your sexuality and then like not recognizing it or not calling it what it is or not wanting to call it what it is or not exploring it further Mm -hmm. beyond that yeah i mean it's the compat of it all it's the wanting to please men of it all it's like there's very little women loving women relationships that are like portrayed positively and like the media a lot of us 25 and up really grew up with being able to see it was always like oh you kiss your girlfriends for funsies or like to make men want to buy you drinks like that was always the discourse and i think that it's really crazy that the conversation like jenna said like when it's two guys doing something like this it's like oh my god they're being queer for money like they're being queer to like make their gay fans buy more merch or something like that but meanwhile when like female presenting people do it there's always very straight (laughs) cis women in the comments being like i kiss my friends all the time don't make this gay and so when i say that like the response to like men like quote unquote like doing something queer because people think that that's going to like get queer fans like give them more money or something i mean that like in the sense where like we've talked about this in past episodes of the podcast where we are so not used to like men platonically showing love to their friends that like when these men in the spotlight do platonically show love to their friends automatically the queer community will latch onto it because it's like oh my god we're getting representation that we don't have now we ship this now this is a thing and then there's like the other side of the coin that are like that's queer baiting like those two people acting like this like showing love to each other i don't know it's like it's so complicated and there's so many layers to it and it's so frustrating because like we talked about with larisha last week it's like queer baiting has completely lost its meaning at this point where like it's being used as such a broad umbrella term that like it doesn't even feel like it means anything anymore and people are using it to describe so many different things that it's like yeah i don't even know what's going on anymore yeah i think in this discussion of like queer baiting is a catch-all to the point where it means nothing i think what people mean with it most commonly is that this person is displaying characteristics that have historically been classified as queer but they're not choosing to identify as queer and the reason this becomes complicated is because it's asking someone to assign a label to themselves when sexuality gender can be a fluid scenario yeah and so we always say like no one owes you their sexuality but it just feels like this term is being used so much so but like specifically in a way where it's like oh that was kind of gay like if you don't say you're gay then like you basically are the villain and so i think like with that being said also it's like there's absolutely no way to like prove monetarily that anybody is like making more money off of like be dressing gender fluid or uh, having queer love interests in music videos or Kylie and Stassi being super close on their Instagrams like there's no way to prove that like that's brought in a profit because that would be also kind of a fucked up statistic to keep track of but like again as we talked about with Larisha it's been proven with like Lil Nas X that when you make very clearly gay content 
that there's a huge amount of people who disconnect with you and stop giving you money so if anything it's like the other way around i think and also i mean this week alone like there was a video of Sam Smith walking in the park and the person who took the video was with other people who were berating him, who were like literally saying like Sam Smith is a sinner, like Sam Smith is a pedophile, like yelling this in public at him. So it's like we're seeing this very clear line in the sand where it's like if you are someone like Kylie or like Harry Styles who like people assume to maybe be queer or who like kylie is kissing her friend but then people are in the comments like no she's not queer it's like kylie and harry are protected by the fact that it's assumed that they're straight whereas sam smith and other artists who are talking about being queer who are talking about how they identify are being berated in public literally quite literally and so there's still the assumed heteronormative privilege that not labeling yourself gives you. And I think this is like the video that I saw of Sam Smith was really eye opening because it's like, this is why there's not more representation in Hollywood, in mainstream media than there is. Because I'm sure a lot of these celebrities don't want to deal with a backlash. Because like we talk about often, younger generations and Gen Z like have grown up in places where they're able to find their community and. That's not to say it's a perfect world. Like, in the real world, bans on transgender kids in school are coming out of the woodworks, like, yeah. n- like just all over the place. So, obviously, there is, like, still a very real-world implication of identifying as these things. But it's almost like there is this pocket of time of, like, a few years. And a lot of this due to TikTok, where it's, like, you were able to find your community of people, and this is a safe space. But it's, like, if you look at celebrities, like, there's probably a lot of celebrities who would identify under the LGBTQ umbrella yeah. who are not publicly saying it because they don't want to deal with a backlash because the the reality of the world is that general America is still largely conservative and there will be backlash yeah. for people who choose to outwardly identify yeah, exactly. as this. And like when it comes to Kylie and Stassi, they also can get, quote unquote, get away with this because they're two sexy hot girlies and like everybody wants to see their tits pressed against each other's like let's be real because like people do fetishize women loving women relationships on on all spectrums of gender like it's always been like a very fetishized relationship especially when it's two like very feminine women and so it's like the discourse of they're just girls being girls like they're just being crazy wow amazing like that's icky and then also it's icky for people to be like oh like they're doing it for money because it's like what what if this is like the only way they know how to like be themselves because it's like again being attracted to more than one gender there's just so many layers to it where it's like they might want to like experiment they might want to like be together but they know that like that wouldn't be widely accepted or like there, right. there's so many caveats right. to it where in a way i'm like okay just let them get away with it like let them yeah. let them be let let the world just be like oh like two hot sexy girlies kissing on my timeline oh love it like just let the world just <laughs> let the world be fucking creeps about it if it lets these two like if you really think about it lets these two young women explore who they are in the only way they know how because especially kylie has like not to stand up for kylie jenner but like she's grown up in front of the camera all she knows is sharing her whole life on the internet if this is what they want to do with it like i feel like just let them do it it's not really it's not hurting anybody at the end of the day and like jenna said it's like it still is like no matter how much safer it might feel in some instances it's still very dangerous to like be outwardly queer especially as a celebrity and especially as like such a polarizing celebrity like kylie jenner i just don't think i just don't yeah i just don't think the jenner kardashian family would ever publicly have a same-sex relationship yeah exactly like it, it, it i wouldn't, don't think they it would wouldn't do fit it. the brand i mean there's this woman on tiktok she's a journalist and her name is mj Corey, and her account on tiktok is kardashian colloquium she's a genius and she posted a video on tiktok saying about how basically the kardashians are known for taking on other 
identities like that's their thing and yet throughout yeah. the whole time in the spotlight the closest that they've come to taking on queerness was chloe judging a drag show of drag queens dressed up like her and courtney kissing one of her friends to make scott disick jealous and those are the two gayest things the kardashians have ever done and so when they're so comfortable <laughs> appropriating so much from other cultures and when like taking so much from like queer culture has become so mainstream and normalized and the fact that they're not leaning into it that much i think says a lot about that family and like their acceptance of queerness and like like jenna said i don't think no matter what like i don't think that either kendall or kylie would ever be allowed to like be publicly queer in a more than like yeah. just girlies kissing girlies kind of way yeah i agree and when we talk about the Kardashians, everything they do is calculated, yeah. right? And so with that mindset, I think what you said is pretty accurate. Like, Momager Chris, like, this would not this would not be a good move for them because we've seen that's, like, can you name a popular celebrity who is gay who is accepted? Like, like fully accepted? Like, maybe Ellen did. Like, fully accepted? Because, like, Little Mars X and Sam Smith are clearly not, but, like, they're also pushing the boundaries Yeah, right I now. think that, like, the only queer people that, like, have been fully welcomed are, like, ones that don't feel threatening, which I know sounds really yeah. unhinged to say, but, like, Ellen DeGeneres, like, yeah. she didn't feel threatening because she wasn't, like, being overtly queer in her existence. And she she also wasn't feminine yes and so she wasn't hurting women's femininity yeah and like challenging the idea that a feminine woman could be a lesbian and i feel like the next closest thing was for a little while jonathan van ness on queer eye because everybody was like queer eye so wholesome but then like in real life and like them coming out as non-binary and all this stuff like the vitriol started to pile up and so it's like, mm. I can accept Queer Eye, but I can't accept you outside of Queer Eye. Well, and if you think about it, it feels like there's been a lot more male, I'm thinking of movie actors particularly, like who were male gay actors who have been accepted. But like, if you think about like lesbians or bisexuals, the list goes down greatly. Yeah, I mean, and like, that's the thing though, is it's like there, there are countless male celebrities who have been famous for a very long time who there have been rumors about for a very long time about how they're closeted and that like their relationships have been for show and like all that stuff and so it's like clearly it's still an issue and like people are still doing like marriages of convenience and like all that stuff i don't i don't think it's as nefarious as like the bearding idea that a lot of people say i think it's like a safety precaution sometimes maybe it's, yeah it's a it's a power play yeah it's a power play and <laughs> what you just said about the marriage of convenience reminded me a lot of like the royals yeah. essentially like getting married because of your class and that's what a lot of celebrities do and that's the image that a lot of celebrities uphold is they have a a certain class system to uphold that doesn't include certain groups of people and certain minorities yeah. and that is why it would not benefit the kardashian jenner clan for them to ever publicly be in a same-sex relationship yeah so i mean there's there's lots of layers to this and i don't want to like open wormholes of like talking about like going too in depth about like marriages of convenience and rumors and all that sort of stuff because that's not really what we do here but i do think like it is important to acknowledge that we have very rarely seen like very liberal like pushing the boundaries queer artists like not be seen with like pickets at like anything that they show up to essentially and so it, it's it's shitty like i'm not saying like it's so shitty that like there is still so much negativity surrounding the fact of like oh if i were to come out what would happen to my career like that's so fucked up and so depressing yeah going back to the original like kylie stassi photo yeah. of it all it's like can we not just have compassion as humans that these people are like exploring or doing what they feel comfortable with and like at the end of the day that might be all that they are allowed to do because of the status that they yeah. uphold. Yeah, I think it's something interesting to think and I, about. And I think also, and this is again like a topic that we've discussed quite often about how a lot of times fans will be like, oh, without 
xyz artist i wouldn't have realized i was queer i wouldn't have this i wouldn't have that like they helped me figure this out because of like an idea of who they are that like we've painted onto them without them telling us and it's like at the end of the day if kylie and stassi being this close and posting photos of them kissing and going like doing their little girly dates and like whatever it is that they're doing even if they're not admitting that they're in a couple or even if they're just not in a couple full stop like them making it seem more normal that like two very feminine women can maybe be in a loving relationship with each other that could potentially help people and so i feel like we need to look at this stuff in like the more positive mindset of it of like people have parasocial relationships with the kardashian jenners no matter how hard that might be to like wrap your head around like Stassi and Kylie could be like somebody else's like could be somebody's Harry and Louie you know and so like seeing those interactions seeing those things could open up like this whole other thing where they can paint a picture for themselves of like wow that that could be a relationship that I could be in and it could make people like come to terms with who they are or feel more comfortable with who they are because it's like oh if they're comfortable posting these things why can't I be like that and so it's like if something's gonna help people is it really that bad yeah i think in this scenario it's not doing harm yeah as much as it's like opening possibilities yeah as you said like i I think like at the end of the day like the parasocial relationship of it all of of just any of it even if it does feel like appropriating queerness to some degree i feel like the parasocialness that you can get from it and like turn it into a narrative for yourself like creating narrative for yourself of like what it means and if that helps you figure shit out for yourself at the end of the day it's like at least it helps somebody i don't know i'm getting i'm getting too deep here with all that being said i just hope everybody is uh thriving and being their truest selves and if feeling like something has more meaning to it than it might actually have helps y'all get by you do you as long as you're not hurting anybody as long as the people who are doing these things aren't hurting anybody that's really all that matters at the end of the day so we hope you enjoyed this discussion i know we had a lot of unpacking that happened today about a lot of internet discourse because internet discourse seems to be a lot of relationships on this week of valentine literally so many relationships and all relationships all relationship discourse and so much of it so if you guys have any thoughts and feelings about anything we talked about today we are always available to chat over on socials. We are at Name Three Songs for all updates and convos. If you have any personal beef or love you'd like to send either of our way, you can find us on social. I am at Sarah underscore Fagan and Jenna is at Jenna underscore a million. So thanks for joining us this week on Name Three Songs. And until next time, l- never let anyone make you feel bad about your favorite band. And remember, you're never too cool to listen to Charlie X yet. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified when each episode comes out and leave a five star review. They really help. If you want to find out more about any of the sources we referenced in this episode, you can visit name3songs.com. 